Oh, have you been in any of the Austin Powers commercials? Commercials. You know when Mike will sign on to do like a Dorito, you know what I mean? Like a endorsement. Oh, yeah. We did one, uh, we did one for GM uh, Reese. for the Super Bowl. We have to help the planet. Oh, please, cheer for my son. Oh. <laughs> So you probably made more money for the commercial <laughs> than you did. If I know yeah. show business, yeah. you definitely made more money in the commercial than you did on the first yeah. Austin Powers. The first one was, Nobody was made like money SAG on. scale. Yeah. Yeah. I think I had a plus 10 scale, but it was still Pretty great. an independent movie. So 70 it was grand? like SAG modified. Yeah. Maybe. Way less than that, buddy. Oh, I think so I took, I, maybe, maybe it took home like 15 oh. for, my whole, for the whole thing. I only worked like five days on the movie. Could have fooled us. Um, <laughs> do you remember reading the Austin Powers script? Yeah. I remember did reading it, it. I'm not even in, I'm like writing for all that Nickelodeon I'm, and like, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I remember reading it and going, he fucking did it. <laughs> and, and Mike said it was like, Mike, who's going to come on here. He was like, I didn't think it was any good. No, I was like, dude, was very nervous. Yeah. I thought it was, I, it was insane. It's like a parody of blow up. Yeah. We're like, okay. <laughs> like it's, it it's felt, so cool. It felt to me, I mean, here's what's funny is I read that and the Carrot Top movie, Chairman of the Board. Uh, in infamous. the same afternoon. Well, I don't know if it was the same afternoon, but I had them in the same level of consideration because uh, I had auditioned You were going to play Carrot. <laughs> well, I had auditioned for both and then been offered both. And so I was going to be either the best friend number three in the Carrot Top movie or I was going to be Scott Nemo. At the time, I was um, doing American Buffalo in the Old Globe Theater in San Diego. And I had just gotten on a path of like being a, an actor i'm an again. amazing i might be Lawrence olivier no it wasn't it wasn't like that but it was really you know i'd already spent like 20 years acting at that point and was having a sort of revelatory experience yeah. in a very small play in a very small uh -huh. theater that is a three-person play and we were just doing the fucking thing so it felt different to me as a performer than it had and I was loving it. I was loving that experience of being able to really spend time on a particular scene, on a particular moment, and craft it so explicitly that you could put it on for the audience night after night. And to work through what the, what the point is of each of these scenes, what the music is end to end, and then to be able to do that over and over again, I was really in a fucking magical place as a performer. So <laughs> when I auditioned for Scott Evil, and we've talked about like Jay Roach and I, Mike, Mike and I, we always, I've, I've talked about this a lot. I took those scenes like I was in a drama and that I think is why it works so well because Mike's so ridiculous. The yeah, you never, so you were, but you were, especially the first one, you were very like <laughs> legit angry. I hate you. Yeah, well, then, like in pain, and I love yeah. it, it, just as a, as a, a human that's always evolving. I love the the trauma that's left to us by our parents, by our surroundings, and there was <laughs> something just so funny about human frailty, right? Like the 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 relatable humanity of us right. all, like our inclination to right. be deeply affected by shit that we should be able to cast off just because it has some kind of familial. Or, or like the deeply emotional time. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of this dad, because the way they'd set it up, it was, it was like perfect, where you've got this absurdist character that wants a very relatable thing, a relationship with his son. I'm your father. And you've got this son who gets the benefit, even by all of this absurdist circumstance, of being able to give a relatable response. Get away from me, you lazy eyed psycho. And so for me, there was nothing fucking funnier than when Scott Evil is like genuinely hurt or. In the scene with <laughs> Carrie Fisher. Yeah. What brings you here with us today? Well, I just really met my dad for the first time five days ago. I was partially frozen his whole life. That is beautiful that you can admit to that. She's kind of kidding. Sure. You're not. No, I'm dead serious. Mike's out of his mind. Yeah, we talked about that too. He was like, listen, the more straight you are yeah. in this scene, the better this thing works. And the upside for that day was that's the first thing that Mike and I filmed Great. together. And so the emphasis of me meeting him was lessened. Um, we were both so excited that Gary fucking I know, yeah. agreed to do this movie. I was we excited when see. she came on screen. I was like, fuck. Yeah. So that was our whole day. And he, I walked into the makeup trailer early and he was getting his head shaved to be Dr. Evil. And I thought, well, this motherfucker's committed. Like, this is an actual, he's going to really go there because he's not 
dicking around. And then we talked about this scene. And then when we got on set, it was Carrie. I was so excited that we would like sort of have conversations in the margins about like, okay, what are we going to do and this and that. But it was very collaborative right, right. from the get. And a good first thing because you're not connecting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the best petulant teen scene <laughs> for my money is it's your scenes in in Austin Powers. Do you ever see Six Degrees of Separation? Yeah. The like college kids that are yelling at the parents. One of them's JJ yeah. J. Abrams. I'm so embarrassed to know you. Really? It's insane. Isn't that is it Ian Summerholm? No, uh no. no, it's no. Uh it's a kid named Osgood Perkins who <laughs> I went to school with at NYU. Oh, really? Who's Anthony Perkins' son? I don't know if he acts anymore, but he's great. JJ's not bad. Yeah, it's like I'll cut to it here, but it's he he just he, his monologue is so fucking funny. JJ's um, got. A he's monologue? like, that was my pink shirt, and you gave it away. You gave a complete stranger my pink shirt. That shirt was a Christmas present from you. I treasured that shirt. I love that shirt. My collar has grown a full size from weightlifting. You saw that my arms had grown, you saw that my neck had grown, and you bought me that shirt for my new body. That was that represented growth to me from lifting. If my neck had gotten it's so fucking funny. <laughs> uh but uh Yeah, it just goes to show like your pain is your pain, no matter Yeah. It's how also he just like nailed he's it's like perfect your pain is your pain, but all teenage pain is the same. Yeah. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.